Robert Hansen was born on April 18, 1944, in Chicago, Illinois. He grew up in a Catholic family and attended Catholic schools during his childhood. Hansen was described as intelligent and ambitious, graduating from Knox College in 1966 with a degree in chemistry. After college, he briefly worked as a policeman before joining the Chicago Police Department as an internal affairs investigator. In 1976, Hansen joined the Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI, as a special agent. He initially worked in the field of domestic surveillance and counterintelligence, where he gained a reputation for his intelligence and dedication to his work. Hansen's career at the FBI seemed promising, and he rose through the ranks over the years. However, Hansen's ideological motivations remained somewhat murky. He wasn't driven by a strong ideological affinity for the Soviet Union or Russia. Instead, they point to a growing disillusionment with the United States, possibly stemming from a sense of resentment or a desire to defect altogether. Hansen felt underpaid by the FBI and was struggling with debt. Selling classified information to the Soviet Union and later Russia provided him with a significant amount of money, over $1.4 million. In 1979, three years into his FBI career, Hansen himself initiated contact. He approached the Soviet Main Intelligence Directorate, GRU, and offered his services as a spy. The GRU accepted his offer, and Hansen began providing classified information. This first tint of espionage lasted until 1981. Fearing exposure, possibly due to his wife discovering suspicious activity, Hansen stopped communicating with the Soviets in 1981. However, by 1985, he was back this time contacting the KGB, another Soviet intelligence agency. Robert Hansen's betrayal began not with him being recruited, but with him taking the initiative in 1979, just eight months after transferring to a counterintelligence squad in the FBI's New York office. The details of how Hansen approached the GRU remain classified. However, we know he did it actively, likely through a pre-planned method or by contacting a known Soviet representative. What information Hansen passed on in this initial phase is also not entirely public knowledge. However, given his role in counterintelligence at the FBI, it's likely he offered access to information about Soviet agents the U.S. had infiltrated or details about U.S. counterintelligence methods. One confirmed detail from this period is particularly damaging. Hansen revealed the identity of Dmitry Polikov, a high-level KGB, another Soviet intelligence agency, general who had been a vital CIA source for years. This betrayal likely resulted in Polyakov's execution. Hansen's motivations for this initial espionage stint are likely a combination of factors. Financial strain is a major suspect, but discontent with the FBI or a desire for recognition might have also played a role. Robert Hansen, the FBI agent turned double agent, employed a surprisingly low-tech approach to communication with his Soviet and later Russian handlers. This old-school spy tactic was Hansen's primary method for exchanging information. He leave packages containing classified documents at prearranged locations, like parks or wooded areas, for his handlers to retrieve. Incredibly, to signal the presence of a package, Hansen would sometimes use inconspicuous methods like placing a specific type of leaf or twig on a nearby object. There's no evidence Hansen used any form of encryption for his messages. The documents he provided were simply handed over in their original form, relying on the Russians' ability to maintain secrecy. This lack of sophistication seems surprising for someone with access to advanced counterintelligence techniques. But why such simple methods? Having expertise in counterintelligence, Hansen might have ironically felt more comfortable with these established methods, believing them to be less detectable. Despite his seemingly low-tech approach, Hansen's espionage activities remained undetected for years. However, the lack of encryption and his reliance on physical retrieval made him vulnerable. Ultimately, the FBI was able to track him down through a combination of surveillance and analysis of the dead drop locations. In this initial period, Hansen's most devastating act was revealing the identity of Dmitry Polikov, a high-level KGB source for the CIA. This likely led to Polyakov's execution and a major setback for U.S. intelligence efforts. With the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, Hansen switched allegiances to the newly formed Russian Intelligence Services, SVR, 
the focus likely shifted to information about U.S. activities related to the emerging Russian Federation. Even after the Cold War ended, the information Hansen provided continued to be valuable for Russia. Understanding U.S. intelligence methods and capabilities remained a priority. After Robert Hansen's arrest in 2001, a series of events unfolded. To avoid the death penalty, Hansen negotiated a plea bargain. He pleaded guilty to espionage charges and was sentenced to 15 consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole in 2002. The FBI launched a comprehensive review of its security procedures in the wake of the Hansen scandal. This review identified weaknesses in financial disclosure practices and led to the implementation of a more rigorous financial oversight program for employees with access to classified information. Robert Hansen remained incarcerated at ADX Florence, a maximum security prison in Colorado, until his death in 2023. The cause of death is believed to be colon cancer. The Hansen case is a cautionary tale for intelligence agencies worldwide. It highlights the vulnerabilities of insider threats and the importance of robust counterintelligence measures. The case also serves as a reminder of the long-term consequences of espionage, with the damage potentially impacting national security for years or even decades.